Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Backer Designs. I've got a fun uh, treat holder for you today featuring the Sophisticated Sled Bundle. This is an online exclusive, uh, which just means it's only on the Stampin' Up! website. You won't find it in the Stampin' Up! catalog, but it is available to everyone. Inside of our box is one of these Kinder Chocolate bars. My kids love anything Kinder Chocolate, so I believe these were from Target or Walmart. They're pretty easily found. All right, so the Sophisticated Sled uh, Bundle allows you to create a sled either by stamping or by die cutting. Um, so we're going to do both. I mean, we're going to just do the stamping. I've done both. You can hop back to the other projects and check them out. Um, I've got two others that have the die cut sled. All right, so let's start with our stamping. You're going to need a piece of basic white and... We're gonna ink this up. And you know what? Sometimes when you have a photopolymer stamp, let's see, do I have my foam mat? When you have a large photopolymer stamp, sometimes it's best to use a foam mat underneath. Just depends on your work surface. Um, I'm underneath here is a just a hard cabinet, so there's no give to it. So I find that I need to put a mat under there that kind of replaces you know, a little bit of that foam that you would have on a red rubber stamp. You can use a piercing mat, you can use a piece of fun foam, but just if you're ever having trouble getting a solid image with your photopolymer, which is the clear, try adding a piece of foam underneath. All right, then we're going to stamp the wreath also. Okay. And look at these colors I'm using. Aren't they beautiful? Pecan Pie, Moody Mauve, and Old Olive. I just love this color combination. I'm going to start with my light Pecan Pie. And I'm going to color in all the little wood pieces of my sled. And it's going to take me a minute or two to get it all colored in. Um, it's, not, it's not difficult. It's just a bigger space. I'm using the bullet tip end of my marker. You can use brush tip end if you want. Um, I just prefer the bullet tip end. Usually for detailed areas like we're gonna use on the wreath, I really prefer that bullet tip end. But for bigger areas, let's switch over to our brush end. I feel like it can cover more space, but I am more likely to get out of the lines with a brush tip. So play around with yours, see what your preference is. I started coloring, I realized, wait a minute, this is supposed to be stamped in Old Olive, so let's stamp it again. I'm gonna stamp it in Old Olive, and then I'm gonna use light Old Olive to color in those uh, larger leaves. So then that way, because you've stamped it in um, the darker, full strength old olive ink, you'll have some contrast. Now there are some berries here. Be careful not to color those. We're gonna color them this moody mauve to match our paper on our uh, box. All right, get all of those colored in. And then grab your Moody Mauve, and I'm gonna use the darker color, the darker marker, and just color those in. Now, if you're using different paper, of course, use the markers that will match. I'm just, I really wanted to use this new Iconic Celebrations Designer Series paper. So I chose to go with Moody Mauve since that's what's in our paper. All right, so now grab your dies. And because I spent so much time coloring, I definitely don't want my dies to slide around. So I'm gonna use a little bit of post-it tape to hold them in place right here. That way I just, you know, would hate to have the die slip and then have to redo it. Now I'm gonna tell you that this, this little die is a little bit tricky and you really need to just keep turning it slowly until you see 
it um, line up exactly where it needs to be. And you can even, if you don't wanna have to do this every time, you can, there we go. Nope. You can make a mark on your die and your stamp so that when you stamp it, you'll know exactly where it's supposed to be. All right, once you get that in place, take that down and let's bring over our cut and gloss machine and cut these guys out. There's our sled and our beautiful wreath. And then ahead of time, I cut the label already for you. We're gonna stamp that in Moody Mauve. Check the supply list for all the colors and the supplies that I'm using, as well as for the measurements of the box that we're getting ready to do. It's on a free PDF and you can print it, save it, do whatever you'd like but you have it for free. All right, now we're gonna add our wreath with a couple of dimensionals. Right up there at the top. And then we will put some dimensionals across here. Actually, you know, one thing I think I did is I cut the wreath in half so that it would be a little bit bigger. You can cut it in half and slide it down, but you know what, I don't know. I don't think we really need it. I think it's just fine like that. Okay, now for the box. You're gonna want a piece of Moody Mauve that is five and three eighths by eight. On the long side, score it at half. Three and three fourths, four and a fourth, and seven and a half. On the short side, score it at half an inch, and five and let me look at my notes. I have the wrong measurements. Five and three eighths. So we want to do four and seven eighths. All right. Now grab your bone folder, burnish those lines, get them nice and crisp. This is a very simple box that will open at the top. We're not gonna seal it closed at the top. The ribbon will hold it closed. All right, grab your paper snips, and it's um, symmetrical on both sides, so it doesn't matter which side you pick. Just cut off one of these corners. All right, cut the corner off, and then you're gonna snip the other score lines. All right, now tear and tape. I'm gonna put a little bit of tear and tape right there on that half an inch tab and we'll fold this in like this and then we'll fold this one over like that to make our box, okay? There we go. It's a very skinny box. Now on one end, see where your edge is? That's gonna be your back side. So fold in the, actually fold in the sides first then the back, and you're gonna fold the front in last, okay? That way you have rounded edges on all four sides, okay? Let's get that bone folder and really stick that down. We want to make sure that adhesive takes. All right, then slide your box in like that and then again sides back and front now before we uh seal it up let's get some adhesive and put on this piece of designer series paper looks like my paper is a little bit too big so let's trim it do i have a trimmer i do gonna have to double check my measurements on that there we go, right there. 
All right, now take your ribbon and I am using our new frayed edge white ribbon. And that's how you're gonna hold your box closed. That way the recipient does not have to tear the box to get into it. They can just um, slide that ribbon off and the box will be open. Sometimes when you give people a nice little uh, gift, they wanna keep the, the box that it comes in because they love it, they love what you've done. So make that easy for them not and don't seal it. All right, pull those legs. I didn't get that straight, but I think we can flatten it down underneath our sled. All right, so see, we'll just do like that. Sneak it and make it, we will make it uh, flat. All right, take your dimensionals and put them on either side so you can squish that ribbon down like that. And there you go, there's your fun Kinder Chocolate Bar Treat Box. All right, click the link here on YouTube, hop back to my blog. Let me know if you have questions and have fun stamping. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.